Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your girl Adriana DC. Tonight's video, I just felt like hopping on here so and discussing some of the new releases that are about to come out, you guys. That's right. There are some fragrances in the perfume community that's gonna have you guys drooling. If not you guys are drooling, I'm drooling because I am like really, really drooling over here. And I'm on the internet and I'm looking up for these perfumes only to find out that they're not released as yet, but they're about to be released or they're released in some countries, but they're not released here in the UK as yet. So I'm going to tell you guys all about it because let me tell y'all, there are some hot new fragrances about to drop and they are hot off the press. They're, they're coming off like some bangers, you guys. I'm not going to lie. These fragrances are coming off like some bangers and I can't wait to get my hands on them. So we're going to talk about it, you guys. We're going to talk about it. So if you guys are interested in hearing about the new fragrances that I am anticipating getting my hands on, then by all means, keep on watching. If you guys are new here, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit the notification bell so that way you will be notified every single time I upload. And for those of you who are my returning subscribers, thank you guys for your continuous support. So let's just get into it. But before we do, let me just take a sip of my wine, guys. Okay. It's a wine drinking type of night because it's cold outside. And I'm finding myself craving liquor and chocolates a lot more than usual because oh my god, it's so cold. Okay, it's so cold. So the first perfume release that has me salivating, you guys. Like I'm telling you, I'm foaming, you know, I'm drooling. Like, I'm gonna tell you the first fragrance that has me in a choke hole is cameras kawa i hope i'm saying this word correctly i'm probably not apparently latafa is about to drop a new fragrance called well i say about they have already dropped this fragrance i think in dubai but the fragrance is called camera kawa which is which apparently stands for coffee kawa is coffee in arabic apparently correct me if i'm wrong okay but I recently saw Jai Amin. I'm going to tag his page right here. Now, Jai Amin is a channel that I faithfully watch. I've been faithfully watching, but he don't answer your comments. Okay. He don't answer your comments. And I have tagged him before. He don't really respond. So, he not response. I don't know why. Either way you put it, Jai Amin dropped us some tea, some fresh hot tea off the press. Okay. And I was just like, oh my God. Like a couple nights ago, a subscriber, you know, had, I had a discussion with a subscriber and I mentioned to them that I can't wait until Latafa brought out a flanker of camera and lo and behold, within two days time, I come across Jai Amin's channel talking about a new perfume release. Let me tell you all something. Let me tell you. Apparently the new fragrance, it features the original camera DNA with some coffee. Who really cares? Because camera on its own is already a banger, an absolute banger. With some coffee, whew, I can't wait. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, dates, praline, and cinnamon, and, you know, the original, you know, um, camera DNA with a touch of coffee, you're not probably you're probably not really processing it or picturing it right or whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? I'm getting it. Okay. I just need it. I need to explore it. I gotta see it. I gotta smell it. I gotta have it. Okay. And like I said to you, Jai Amin has it. It appears it's available in Dubai. It appears it's has, it's already like out of uh, you know on the shop floors in Dubai or whatever may have you, because I saw somebody else review the fragrance on tiktok okay in dubai so it's out out but apparently it's not officially out until december and then i'm seeing some on ebay so it appears that they released camera kawa in the uae countries and yeah they're available on ebay for some ridiculous prices okay listen i want this perfume but I ain't sure if I want it that bad, okay? Like, I'm seeing, like, 135 US dollars with 48, po 40, 40, 48 posted. 48 dollars in posted. Come on, man. Stop that shit. Stop it right this instant. I'm going to have to just be patient and wait for it to drop in December and come to me. Because I'm not going to have y'all take advantage of me like that. But I need this perfume, okay? I need it. So, that is camera 
Hawa by Latafa. I hope I'm calling that word correctly. Next up, Mansara Amore Cafe. No, Amor Cafe. I hope that's, I'm calling it right. <laughs> Amor Cafe, okay? The cafe is accentuated. Now, I've been seeing this fragrance pop up here and there, okay? And you know your girl that went on the internet, typed it in and looked it up and not one single hit. This perfume isn't available in England. I did see one reviewer on Instagram showcase the fragrance and people are in the, you know, the, 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 the comment section like, where did you find this? And she didn't answer. So she, you know, she gatekeep them. But it's okay because they got to release that shit. They got to bring it to the rest of us. And when they do, I got to get my hands on it. Let me just give you guys a note because the notes are available for Amore Cafe. Um, right. So camera. <laughs> I didn't even give you guys the notes for camera. That's because they're not really available. But I have linked Jai Amin's video in the description box. You guys need to check that video out because you guys need to hear about it. You guys need to check that shit out. That They're saying that camera Kawa is better than camera. Can you possibly believe that? Anyways, let's get into the notes for Mansara's Amor, Amor Cafe. So the main accords in Amor Cafe is sweet vanilla coffee, almond fruity warm spicy amber and the top notes are another coffee no coffee fragrance coffee and amaretto child in the middle note we have some ice cream and vanilla in the base we got some brown sugar vanilla and ambergris just send it to me okay just give me the perfume because ice cream i noticed that you know people are playing on ice cream we have had some fragrances with some ice cream notes i know that um dior's belle de jour has an ice cream note and um another fragrance i'm going to tell you guys about also having an ice cream note and yeah a few fragrances are popped up with this ice cream note so it seems ice cream notes are going to be the thing this year and i think that one of the dolce and gabbana flankers for light blue also had an ice cream note but it wasn't that prominent so this is an interesting you know note structure in my opinion coffee and amaretto i mean yeah amaretto used to be my favorite alcohol once upon a time so I can imagine this perfume is going to have some coffee. It's going to be sweet, a little bit boozy, a bit of creaminess with some sweetness from the vanilla in the heart. It's going to be brown. It has some brown sugar in the vanilla with some ambergris. So this is going to like, it, it, I'm, get, I'm gathering this fragrance is going to be a brown sugary, sweet, boozy, a little bit creamy coffee vanilla fragrance because we got vanilla in the heart and vanilla in the base. So we're going to have a lot of vanilla going on in this fragrance. Either way you put it, I need it. I need this perfume. Okay. I absolutely need this fragrance and it's not available here yet okay i've seen one person on instagram review this perfume i probably should tag that person i'm gonna tag them if i can find them i'm gonna tag them in the description box so you guys can check that video out one person on youtube reviewed that fragrance thus far i haven't seen anybody else and one person on instagram and i can't remember so i don't know if i'm able to find them but i need it okay i just need it so that's amor cafe by mancera okay Next up, we got Caramel Oud by Theodorus Calotinis. Calotinis? I'm guessing it's Calotinis. I don't know. Okay. Now, I don't have no fragrances in my perfume collection from Theodorus Calotinis. And I do hear Veronica says, talk about a fragrance from this brand, Coffee Addict. Because I don't really hear much about this brand, to be honest with you. Unless I'm completely missing it. But Veronica says, often talks about coffee attic and i really want to try this perfume in particular however the brand is about to, the brand has a release not about the, the brand has released a new fragrance called caramel oud and stay tuned for that review you guys because i'm about to get that one okay <laughs> that was in my reach so <laughs> i got it so caramel oud has in main accords of caramel sweet warm spicy oud metallic leather and tobacco very interesting and the note structure are caramel saffron toffee and aki gala wood or oud so this smell this this sounds not smells because i haven't smelt it okay this sounds like it's gonna be a spicy caramel um kind of like a um caramelized toffee essence slightly oudy scent now i don't think the oud is gonna be prominent because it's listen agarwood and oud in, in in brackets i think when brands put Agarwood, it means it's going to lean more woody than oody, in my opinion. I may be wrong. And when the brand highlights oud itself, it's a bit more oody-er and oud is a bit more prominent. So 
it looks like this is going to be a predominantly sweet caramelized a little bit spicy slightly woody scent i don't know but we're going to talk about it because again this fragrance should be arriving tomorrow so i will be giving you guys my thoughts on this perfume and i do intend to dive a little bit into theodore's calatina's fragrances because the perfumes are quite affordable so yeah i do like that so that's caramel oud by theodore's calatina's okay. next up we have kylie you guys hello so Mona Katan dropped us a bomb. Okay, as you guys know, as of recently, she has been doing God's work, and I applaud her for that. I truly appreciate her efforts, you know. There is something going on in the world right now, and I'm not quite sure we're even allowed to talk about it on YouTube. I don't know. I have seen one YouTuber passionately discuss this matter, and there are some things to be concerned about because, you know, we're here shopping for perfume, you know and caught up in the beauty industry and a lot of us haven't used our platform to make our voices be heard about some things that's going on in the community and you know in the world and it's a bit disheartening but it's also scary because you guys know you know um um how things have been going lately is when you speak up you are often stifled you're shut down you're banned and all that good stuff and that's something that i noticed when the previous world crisis um came out because i actually posted some stuff on instagram and you motherfuckers did not even like or comment on those you know photos or those updates or those you know um posts so i know you guys a lot of you aren't really into world issues and stuff like that but i'm gonna say i applaud mona katan for speaking up on something you know that's so serious and that's you know we should be using our platform to speak on it a lot more but i think a lot of us including my i'm not i'm not quite sure if i'm scared but the possible consequences i don't know i don't really know but yeah you guys um, there are some things that's happening and Mona Katan has been doing the Lord's work and I really appreciate her for being selfless and wholehearted and for opening up herself so much on YouTube because often I think that she opens up herself a little bit, a lot or a little bit too much and then sometimes some YouTubers do, I, I don't know, I want to say, I don't want to, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> I saw one particular YouTuber post about her fragrance and they were just, in my opinion, I didn't like the way they went about it. And I felt like it was a way to get views by attacking Mona Katan's release. You don't have to like her fragrance, but I don't feel like you need to attack it. And I, I saw that. And when I saw that and she actually responded and apologized for them not liking the fragrance, I personally felt that she was opening up herself a little bit too much. But it's also refreshing to see that she's so wholehearted and so selfless that she speaks up, you know, and she faces things heads on. So that's really nice. But as of lately, she has been posting, she has been doing the last walk, and I applaud her. I, I commend her for speaking up on such a sensitive topic. I really, really appreciate that. And I wish that a lot of us, including myself, would be brave enough to, to do that because unlike, you know, other YouTubers, and I've heard some YouTubers saying that, you know, they're not, they don't want to touch base on these topics but i'm paying attention i am following everything you know um i wish i could do more and i wish i would you know there are ways for me to do more but yeah i do commend mona katan for paying attention to the, to this world crisis and to these issues that's happening that a lot of people are very silent on so i commend her for that however she did drop us a post saying that you know hey she has a um a duty to her brand and she's now promoting her next perfume release because apparently the brand just celebrated five years. So you guys know I love me some Kylie, you guys. And Mona Katan is about to drop a fragrance, a new perfume. And it has something to do with lychee and champagne. You know how Mona does. Mona gives us crumbs. Like day by day, she drops a crumb, okay? Her marketing strategy is through the roof it is a banger by the time the fragrance gets here you're like oh my god give it to me give it to me already right <laughs> that's what it's like with mona katan's releases and i'm here for it 
because it hasn't apparently has some lighting some champagne um one of her fragrances the um bel the silk santal had in some champagne but we didn't really get much champagne i didn't get much champagne i don't know about you guys i didn't really get much champagne so i'm hoping for champagne to come in this particular scent now she hasn't given us the name of this particular perfume however i did see an instagram post which apparently leaked the perfume i'm not going to tell you guys the name because what i did appreciate is that the people in the comment section requested that they remove the fragrance off of instagram so it appears just like with young pistachio it appears that her fragrance is being leaked i may be wrong i don't know so i'm not gonna quote the name that the instagrammer highlighted is gonna be the name of the fragrance i'm not gonna do that but kylie has a new release and we need to get it okay it looks like it's gonna be something similar to eden juicy apple but we don't really know i don't really know i don't care whatever she dropped we got to cop it i gotta cop it so <laughs> i don't know about you guys but i'm copying it for sure <laughs> so that's kylie kylie's about to drop a new release and i can't wait i don't know what to expect because it's fall winter and it has a light sheet i'm not quite sure what to expect but who cares we're gonna get it and i'm gonna, when i get it i'm gonna tell you guys all about it so that's you know kylie's um you know anticipated new release let's move on to the next billy eilish just dropped her new fragrance which is called billy eilish number three and it's featured in a red bottle the same shape of her original yes what do you want who look back her tongue at him okay come out now bye <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyways so billy eilish dropped her number three fragrance and it's in a red bottle in the same shape of the traditional billy eilish one and two okay and i can't tell you how much i'm here for you guys you guys know i was late to the billy eilish bandwagon when i saw the fragrance come out i just thought to myself boy in god's name when i buy this perfume with his head chop off you know in this bronze bottle by this designer i know the hell she is where she come from i swear that was my thoughts i remember i saw first person i saw review that was Ange from 50 cents uk and i was like oh, what the hell is this right and i completely dismissed the perfume a year later i caught the fragrance and i'm about to get myself a backup bottle because it is on sale everywhere so billy eilish number one of course you guys know that is a sweet warm a little bit spicy vanilla fragrance i think some berries in here so some cacao it's sweet it's creamy with a nice intoxicating vanilla note it's intoxicating i wore it earlier today i'm wearing a different fragrance right now i'm still wearing it but i can't smell it so <laughs> anyways i don't really wear fragrances to film but i had it on earlier today and then she came up with number two and nobody talked about it this is a spicy a little bit citrusy palace santo ebony wood fragrance banging very has a lot of projection very strong a lot of presence I, it stole my heart like i the, the very first time i smelt it it just blew me away and this was actually released earlier up in the year and nobody's been talking about it and for the fall season i just knew when i got my nose on it i had to get it and it was just kind of crazy that nobody really you know talked about that fragrance you know even though it was released earlier in the year i already put it i have it and it's a banger in my opinion and she's now releasing well she has now released a third fragrance okay and let me just give you guys the notes so the main accounts in billy eilish number three are woody musky fresh spicy soft spicy aromatic amber powdery fresh conifer and sweet okay and then the, the top notes we have some pink pepper jasmine and some grapefruit in the heart we have some fur saffron and cedar in the base you have some musk amber and oak moss now first of all when i saw this fragrance being featured or debuted i thought we were gonna get some cherries and i was like oh my god just send it to me just give it to me right and uh, unfortunately it ain't got no cherries in it but it's in a red bottle so everybody was like you know wait a minute where's the cherries either way she gave us another seemingly spicy musky woody fragrance with the essence of amber that's what i'm channeling from the note structure now this perfume has already hit the market it's only available on her website which is american base and your girl popped onto the website on the day it was released i think it was released about two three days ago 
I think it was released about two, three days ago. If not, I had a time lapse and I didn't realize it's been a week. But I believe that the fragrance has been released about two, three days ago. And when I hopped onto the website and I saw the delivery charges, I sank the goddamn trolley. Okay. I sank that shit. <laughs> I'm the type, I'm one of those persons, I'm not paying delivery charges that know we are close or a fraction of percentage of the actual item. I just, I won't be doing that. So, unfortunately, agonizingly, we're going to have to wait until Billie Eilish sends that perfume to England. Okay? But, yeah, um, this perfume seems as if it's going to be, has a spicy floral opening because there's a pink pepper, jasmine, and grapefruit. So it, it might have a spicy, slightly citrusy opening, okay? There are some jasmine in the heart in the middle of those fragrances. So it appears the florally touches might soften up the spicy edges to this perfume. There is some fall, saffron, and cedar in the heart. Fur. I'm not quite sure what to expect from fall. And there's saffron and cedar. So again, we're keeping the spices throughout the fragrance, but it, it appears that the the spice is kind of like mellow. Even though it's a spice apparent, even though there's spice apparent in the top and the heart, it seems as if it's coupled with the fall and the cedar. So we're probably going to get, you know, um, the woody and the spicy touches in harmony, I presume. And in the base, we have some musk, amber, and oak moss. So I presume... Moss comes off a little bit clean in fragrances, and then we have some amber that adds a bit of depth, and then oak moss comes off like a somewhat of a like a wet wood vibe. And I saw a reviewer actually said actually actually state that the fragrance does have like a wet wood vibe and somewhat of a Christmas tree essence from the fall, and there's some pine vibes going on. I'm not quite sure, but I'm intrigued, and I will be getting this perfume whenever I get whenever it gets here because. I know what happening. You know, the UK used to get things first, and now all of a sudden America is getting things first. I don't know what y'all doing. I don't know what's happening, but y'all pissing me up because I'm more a, I'm more cafe. I thought I would have had that in the bag by now. Um, Billy Eilish three. I thought we'd have got that for sure. And yeah, I thought we'd have got. I thought we would have had that fragrance. Okay, but never mind. Okay, it has to come to us, and apparently it's limited edition. I need it. Okay, I need the Bill Eilish number three, and I will be getting a backup bottle of the number one. I was thinking about getting a backup bottle of number two, but number two is really strong, so I'm not quite sure just yet. So we'll just wait and see. But that's Bill Eilish number three. Cherry Punk by Room 1015, but this is the extra de parfum. So it appears this brand, Cherry Punk Room 1015. I've never tried anything from the brand before. It did pique my curiosity recently when I saw the original Cherry Punk. You know, it's been flashing up here and there. However, they just released the Extrait de Parfum. And I want to try it because this perfume has been on my mind, you guys. I'm not going to lie. Cherry Punk has been on my mind. I'm not quite sure if I mentioned it in my recent video where I did the top most hyped up fragrances on YouTube. But I really, really want to try this perfume. And let's just get to the notes. In the top notes of cherry punk, we have cherry, of course, saffron, and some citron pepper. In the heart, we have some violet, jasmine absolute, and some mimosa. In the base, we have some patchouli, tanka bean, and black leather. So apparently, the original was like a, a, uh, a, a it was like a, a cherry leather fragrance, a cherry and leather scent. I'm not quite sure what else is highlighted in perfume because I haven't really checked out that scent. I just know that there's a cherry punk. And there is, right, again, it's meant to be like a cherry and edgy, leathery, sweet cherry fragrance. And uh, I'm definitely intrigued. Now, this one seems as if it's going to be a spicy cherry with a bit of florally touches in the heart. With a very strong, sweet base because we have some patchouli, tanker bean, and black leather. So we have like a strong, sweet, leathery base to this perfume. Okay, I haven't seen much reviews on this perfume. I think I probably saw one. I am Noelle talk about this and she briefly touched base on this particular scent. But I haven't seen many people talk about this cherry punk extra de parfum. This perfume seems to be only available on the original Room 1015 website. So I really would like to try this perfume. So yeah, whenever it comes my way or... I might have to get it off of the website. I don't know. We're going to see. But yeah, whenever it comes my way, I'm definitely intrigued by this perfume. Out of all of the most hyped up fragrances and, you know, the recently new scents, 
this is definitely one that I want to get my hands on. So we're going to see if it comes my way, you guys, or I might have to get it on the original website. So that's Cherry Punk, the Extract, the Parfum. Next up, we have Ginger Biscuit by Joe Malone. Now, this is not a new release, apparently, okay? This perfume seems as though it was released in 2013. However, it's available this year uh, for the festive season in a limited edition bottle, I presume. It's in a different bottle because the bottle I'm seeing here in Fragranca is different. So I presume it's in a limited edition bottle. And this fragrance appears to be only available seasonal. But I'm a little bit intrigued. Now, <laughs> I actually saw Sharita M talk about this perfume. And, you know, we just want to be in things because <laughs> I got zero interest whatsoever in Joe Malone fragrances. I really do. But this ginger biscuit, it's been doing the rounds, okay? It's been doing the rounds. Let me just give you guys the main cards. So, ginger biscuit by Joe Malone has a warm, spicy vanilla, caramel, sweet, nutty, cinnamon, woody, fresh, spicy, powdery, balsamic accords. The notes are caramel, vanilla, hazelnut, ginger, cinnamon, tonka bean, and nutmeg. This sounds really good. Now, apparently, it smells like ginger snaps. I have the slightest clue what a ginger snap is, okay? I really... <laughs> I have the slightest clue, okay? But this perfume does sound interesting. We do have the issue of longevity when it comes to Jo Malone fragrances, which is, I don't know why, I, I kind of like this smell. I don't know. I'm not really getting an attraction to Jo Malone scents, but this one here might come home with me. I'm still iffy on it because I saw it and I was about to get it and I was like, I don't know. So I'm still thinking about this scent, but the notes sound good. I have seen some reviews. I said this fragrance smells more gourmands than actual perfume like which is a no for me but i am intrigued by trying this perfume because i don't know it's definitely getting my it's definitely getting my attention but yeah for the most part it sounds like it smells like a gyp, a caramelized sweet vanilla cinnamon-esque ginger biscuit vibe that's what i'm getting from this perfume it's, yeah they say it smells like ginger snaps i don't know it definitely looks like some ginger biscuit with the essence of caramel recipe <laughs> in my opinion but the bottle does look very pretty okay yeah i might be trying that one okay so that's ginger biscuit by joe malone next up we have a new perfume release from sora dora and this perfume is called mallow now there are a list of perfumes that i would like to try from sora dora okay but Again, I'm playing catch up here and I haven't grabbed myself one of them yet. And I know the reason why. I'm not going to say it just, just yet. But hopefully by the end of the month, I can tell you guys why I've been holding off and getting this scent. But we get to that. So, Sordora Mallow was released in 2023. And this fragrance has the main accords of powdery, sweet violet, fruity, white floral, musky, vanilla, citrus, and floral. Okay. And we have top notes of raspberry, vanilla, sugar, and pink pepper. Middle notes of orange blossom, heliotrope, and almond. And in the base, we have some violet, black musk, and amber. This perfume sounds interesting. You know what's funny is that I put this perfume in the list to discuss tonight. And I didn't look at the note structure. It's really weird. I didn't take note of the note structure. As a matter of fact, I've seen people review this perfume and I... I haven't really got a vibe of exactly what they think of the perfume. I've seen brief reviews, but I didn't retain what they said about the perfume. However, this looks like a powdery, fruity, sweet vanilla, a fruity, sugary, sweet vanilla fragrance with some velvety, creamy, slightly milky touches in the heart because you have heliotrope and almond. And heliotrope tends to give off a, a velvety, smooth, almost creamy essence to fragrances. And then, of course, you have the almondy touches, which most likely will solidify you know, that creamy texture. And then the base, you have some violet, musk, and amber. So it appears this fragrance has some depth, but it's still keeping it a little bit florally and a little bit clean. So I do get the impression that this perfume is a bit um, musky or a bit light because it has some violet and amber. Not a lot of anchoring notes in the base. It does look interesting because it has vanilla sugar. So like a sugary sweet raspberry essence with some spice. 
Heliotrope and Almond. I am most definitely intrigued. I am pretty much intrigued by every fragrance from Sordora at this point. So I do feel like I need to try this perfume. I want to try this scent. I'm not going to lie. I want to try Sordora Mallow. So that's that one. So next up we have Green Butterfly by Byron Parfums. And I recently saw this green bottle pop up. I saw somebody on Instagram do a perfume review, do a right, a full perfume collection review. I think um face, I think it was on YouTube, not Instagram. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I think it was on YouTube. And I saw this green bottle. I know obviously Burn Performs has the red bottles and the blue bottles, but I've never seen the green bottle, okay? And I saw recently two YouTubers start with three. I thought I saw um I saw Gabby Love's perfume, sorry, and um I can't remember the other YouTuber. <laughs> Gabriella's perfume. And of course, this YouTuber who is doing a perfume collection video talk about it because she had it in her collection. But I haven't seen this fragrance like every everywhere. Okay. I am aware that this is a fairly new release. Okay. And the main cards in this particular scent are powdery, woody, musky, iris, fresh, aldehyde, citrus, white floral, warm, spicy, and earthy. Very interesting. Okay. And... Uh, we have top notes of iris, chocolate, and citruses. Middle notes of aldehydes, white musk, suede, vanilla, and jasmine. Base notes of sandalwood, vetiver, pajuli, and exotic woods. Now, I've never seen a fragrance with iris as a top note. So this perfume is definitely going to be powdery because this is one of the main accords. Dark chocolate with some citrus. So we got powdery, dark chocolatey essence in the opening. There's some aldehydes with some white moss. I'm guessing this is going to have a very soft white floral essence. There's some suede, vanilla, and jasmine. So this is going to have a soft white floral essence. I gather that. A very soft white floral essence. Um, and then in the base, we have some sandalwood, vetiver, patchouli, and exotic woods. So it's going to end off with a slightly creamy, woody essence in the base with slight earthy touches. Very interesting smelling. It sounds like it's overall a dark chocolate powdery white floral scent with wood, a woody base. Interesting. I do. I am intrigued by this particular scent, you guys. And yeah, I think I want to try it because I just realized I don't have much fragrances in my collection with, you know, that that's chocolate forward or chocolate dominant. I have perfumes with some cacao and some praline. But I don't have fragrances that's all about chocolates in my collection. I don't know why. I don't know. I just, like, I kind of buy perfumes that I just like. And I love chocolates. But I don't know why I haven't, like, focused on, you know, collecting a chocolate-forward perfume collection. I don't know. But, yeah. There you have it, you guys. These are the new fragrance releases that I am anticipating getting my hands on. I hope you guys enjoyed chopping up with me and discussing these new scents. Let me know in the comment section what fragrances you guys are interested in and whether or not you guys have managed to get your nose on them because I know some of them are out. You know, Ginger Biscuit, Mallow, and Green Butterfly, they're out there so you guys can try them. But let me know if you guys managed to get your nose on Billie Eilish number three as well because it is available in America. Let me know what you guys think and how you guys are feeling about these new releases and whether or not you plan on getting some of them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If in fact you did, please give me a very big thumbs up. If you guys are new here, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit the notification bell so that way you will be notified every single time I upload. And for those of you who are my returning subscribers, thank you guys for your continuous support. Until next time, see you guys in my very next video. Bye.